Hi, it's Stephen Caleb from Brownells, and we're back with five more mistakes people make with their ARs. Steve, yes, we are. Um, so we did the last video. You guys absolutely flooded it with comments, so that's awesome. And uh, you gave us a lot more uh, more ideas to talk about. So apparently, we're not the only ones making mistakes on our builds. Listen, I, that makes that makes me happy to hear. And also, sad, happy sadness. Yeah. 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 Bittersweet. Yeah, bittersweet. Look at that wordsmith over here. Um, yeah, so anywho, what were we talking about? Top five mistakes. All right, let's jump right into it. Last one, we talked about a bunch of lower receiver stuff. Let's talk about some upper receiver stuff. And the number one I want to talk about, because I made this one recently, okay. is mounting stuff to your handguard that contacts your gas block. I just, I wasn't paying attention on my, my 308 yeah. AR, you know. You of all people. I mounted a bipod up there and the screw came through and pushed the gas block. I recreated that on this one so you can kind of see what I'm talking about here. So if you were to take a gander, let me, uh, let me grab a pointing tool, a tool for pointing, if you will. You need another hand? I've got plenty. All right, so the gas block is mounted under the handguard right there, right? And if you look at the bottom here, I've mounted this uh, 1913 rail, and the screw is actually coming through, pushing on the gas block. Can you see? You, you can you, you just look in there. That's crazy, right? So what? I know you're thinking, big deal, you know, whatever. If you look at this upper from a distance, you know, you can see the barrel is actually going up in the handguard. It's tilting upwards. Or the handguard's going down, depending on how you look at it. Hey, you know, this is you know, flippy floppy, potato potato. You know, whatever. Now it's going up. Or it down. ain't good. Hey, I tell you look that. that. Um, you just completely derailed me. Uh, any so yes, problems this can cause. Big number one here is accuracy issues. You are not going to be able to group a barrel or an AR um, that you did this to. So ways to fix it. This is the magic moment here. Let's um, not just tell you how you screwed up. Let's, uh, okay. let's let's tell you how to fix it. Let's let's dig into it a little bit. So. Here's what I've seen, Steve, and, and you tell me I if this wait. is this is something you would do. I've seen people come in with the Dremel tool and take the bottom of that gas block off, shave Whoa. that sucker down. That's, listen, that's not the way. That's not the direction my brain goes whenever I'm kind of troubleshooting issues here. Um, you work on the cheapest part. Listen, take that screw and shorten it just a little bit, okay? Don't go cutting on your gas blocks. What are you? What are you what, listen, what are you doing? Uh, just shorten that screw a little bit. That's all you got to do. Or decide if it absolutely has to be in that position. There you go. Move it back. Move it back, move it forward, shorten the screw. Yeah. Boom. Um, you won't run into this issue on every handguard. This is a slimmer handguard. Um, like the another one that you may not have this issue on is going to be the um, Daniel Defense, uh, those, those RIS-3 M-Lock right. rails. Right. Those are pretty beefy, and there's plenty of room under yeah. there. This didn't happen early on when the handguards were like Zeppelin hangers and on the yeah, inside. Yeah, like know, those, those huge. Yankee Hill ones that yeah. are just ginormous. Which um, I've got a couple of those now. Just they're not bad handguards. Hey, no, I'm not. I didn't say they were bad. I just said they were big. Okay. Big's not always bad. Get your mind out the gutters again. This is. Uh, anywho, let's let's talk about number two. Steve. Number two. Let's number, get there. Yeah, number two, um, or number six. We should have on. a drum roll. Number two. You, yeah, you, you do. The, we'll hire somebody. It's in the budget. Um, number two, also talking about gas blocks. It's going to be gas block alignment. This is... Oh, that's pretty basic. Yeah, yeah and I, I, I'm going to say that these are probably not in any particular order. Um, I know I said the last one was the biggest mistake. It's not. Gas block alignment is probably the biggest mistake. It's more common. It is definitely more common. Uh, what I'm going to do here, Steve, I'm just going to pull this out real quick. Uh, the handguard, I mean, not, you know. So, if you could... Just entertain everyone here while well, I get these screws undone. And when we're talking alignment, it's not necessarily going around the clock, but it could be fore and aft also. Absolutely. Because I've seen some gas blocks that were a little tight on the tolerances, and if you had them too far forward, you might not be getting all the gas you need. So let me take this off here. It's it's super tight because I, I uh, it's contacting on the gas block. So. <laughs> oh, great. You got it that, locked on there. Remember that thing I said not to do? Yeah. All right, we're we're okay now. I got I got this figured. Look at one me. thing just leads to another. Look at me go. All right. So gas block alignment. The gas block itself. There's a hole 
And I'll just actually show you on this one. I don't know why I even pulled this one off. Look at this. This one's pinned, uh, so it's going to align where it aligns. There's no way you can change it. But for set screw ones like this, it's important. There's a hole that goes through your barrel into the gas block, right? It goes right through there and then goes through that gas tube. That's the gas that cycles your firearm. So if your gas block is t tilted a little bit to the left or a little bit to the right, it may still get enough gas to work for a little while, but as your gun gets dirty, there's not enough pressure to cycle the action. You want you want full gas. You want everything aligned. Yeah, if it's partially covered, there's a step there where carbon can, can accumulate. Yes, that's a very good point. Yeah. And um, th typically the hole in the gas block is larger than the hole in the barrel. So there's a little bit of room for air yeah, there, there is. but not a, not a whole lot. So just make sure you're aligned there. Um, a lot of people talking about, you know, fore and aft. Mm -hmm. A lot of people will say you have to put it a little bit off the shoulder. Right. Um, I don't because the hole in the gas block is larger than the hole in the barrel. I just run that sucker all the way to the shoulder. Yeah, the manufacturers have anticipated that. If you're not using a you know a forward handguard retainer like that, that's yeah. the thickness we're talking about. Right, it's super thin. I mean, worst case scenario, um, my gas tube is sitting a little bit f f deeper into my gas key, and I'm getting a better seal. So I that's I just run it all the way to the shoulder. Yep. So, Smack up against it. Yeah, there's that one. I'm going to put these back in here before I lose them, and Steve's going to slap me around when we turn off the cameras here. I'm just kidding. Steve's, Steve's not abusive. Uh, also, there were comments in the last video, no, Steve's not my father. We're not related. No, no we're not. Right? I believe we're not. And just yet, in the brotherhood of gunsmiths. The brotherhood of gun... Listen, mate, you're my brother now, Steve. It's, you just you just declared. Uh, and there is coffee in these cups, by the way. They're, they're, they're not empty. Yeah, we're... Just two guys that served in the army and thought gunsmithing was a good way to go after that. Yeah, what fools so we were. Just watch, watch your choices early in what life. What fools we were. Yeah, make listen, make good choices. Right? I'm not saying is you know it, it worked out for us. It, it doesn't work out for everyone, I guess. All right, next one's going to be castle nut torque. Oh. Yes, because you know th this was I I wasn't really going to include this. Um, but someone in the comments brought it up. All right. So I was like, you Fair know enough. what? Yeah, this is this is your list as much as it is our list. So yeah. Uh, Castle nut torque is so th this is the receiver extension or buffer tube, if you will. This piece right here that I'm spinning is the castle nut. So castle nut screws down here, and I think the torque for this. I have a you know what? I have a torque wrench that says the torque on it. Let me. Yeah, here we go. Castle nut torque 40. Listen, that should be torqued at 40 foot pounds. And if you forget, get a Midwest Industries wrench because it's written right on the wrench. Uh, so torque this down 40 foot pounds. If you over torque it, I know what you're thinking. What happens if I over torque it? So if you put a crazy amount of torque on this thing, it's going to be putting pressure on this tube trying to twist it. And when that happens, whenever you're putting a crazy amount of pressure on this tube trying to twist it, let me. Uh, I'm gonna, there's a groove cut in the bottom of your receiver extension, mm -hmm. and the tooth on this end plate is going to be digging into the side of that, and you are just going to absolutely wreck your threads when you try and pull this thing right. apart. So that's an alignment groove to keep it from tilting. Yeah. So uh, don't over torque it. That's a bad idea. Terrible idea. All right. Yeah, so. that's a mistake that is easy to do on your first build. It really is, and. Um, Let's jump back to the upper receiver. Okay, I'm we're not, jumping. We're not done there yet. This is me jumping. This is Steve jumping. Uh, so now we're going to talk about overlapping the upper receiver. Overlapping? You mean having something go too far past it? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Over overlapping. So it, I'm trying to, you know, I'm trying to play off of your cleverness, but I'm not as clever. So. So lapping a receiver. So lapping a receiver. Steve, I had to I had to take a sip of coffee there. Is, is lapping a receiver even necessary? Did we do a Smithbusters on that? We did, and yeah. you know we determined that Why? in some in some cases it 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 sure you know whatever. But <laughs> I lapped one. I so I lapped one recently because it was a little out. So That's I, right. I yeah so sometimes it's a valid. It's, it's a valid thing to do. It's betting it that wasn't necessary. That that's oh, what drives my game. Okay. Well, we're not going to get into that here. So overlapping. Um, so for those of you who don't know, lapping the upper receiver is whenever you take a, a tool such as this lapping rod, and you, I'll just go ahead and kind of mock it up here. 
So you put some lapping compound between these two surfaces here, and this this tool being concentric with the the uh, ID of the upper receiver pushes up against it, turns it, and laps it. So it cuts this receiver flat. All right, which is which is good. You want uh, you want full contact there with your barrel. Uh, have everything nice and good there. Now the issue with overlapping or removing too much material is that now your barrel is going to sit too far into your upper receiver and your feed ramps are going to overlap. So the feed ramps and the barrel extension overlap with the receiver. That's a lot of lapping. You know. It's a lot of lapping, but it has been done. Some people just get a little carried away. You know, that's okay. It's sometimes it's, you know, you go a little too far. Upper receivers aren't super expensive. Boy, if you go that far, I mean, your lineman pin is going to be sticking proud of the threads. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's not going to sit all the way into the threads. Um, they can't see that. I know, I'm pointing it. I'm showing you here. That you thanks, guys, listen, thanks. we're having a private conversation. Uh, no. Um, also, but the biggest thing here is this block right here, that's cut for your cam pin path. You can kind of see it on the inside there, yeah. too. Uh, so your cam pin is going to be unlocking too far to the rear because your bolt is set too far to the rear. And it's going to be digging into that upper receiver. It's going to take a little piece of it every time it's, it comes back and recoil. Listen, ju just like these videos, they just take a little piece of me every every, <laughs> time, every time I go through that comment section. Um, but no, it, it's obviously it's going to cause issues. So um, don't overlap your upper receivers. Now, I think I think we're at the last one for this particular video, Steve. Okay. All right. Okay, I'll prepare myself. And for that, we're going to slide back into the lower receiver. Oh. All right. I didn't want you to jump anymore, so we're just going to slide. Um, what was this one? Oh, yes. Let me hear you. you You're going to lap the lower receiver with this? You know, it probably would fit back here. I'm not going to do that. All right, so this is a... A big one with some some very novice or first time builders um, that just haven't watched Brownell's videos, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, and what they'll do, Steve, they'll screw this thing in. Let's um, let's pretend I put the end plate on, or I'll just actually do it so we don't. Okay, then we don't have to pretend. For those of you with no imagination, um, it, I'll put it on there. All right, so. Some of them just kind of screw this in here, call it good, boom. Now they, they find out they have extra pieces, that detent and spring that retain right. the buffer. Right. And uh, they just don't include those. I've, I've seen this. And working in the gunsmith shop, I've had people come in like this. There's nothing to hold the buffer and spring in because they didn't put the retainer in. Uh, because this isn't screwed in far enough to retain it. And it's, I'm like, I go to pull their gun apart and the buffer and spring are shooting out I'm all like over the place. Like a jack in the box. I'm like, whoa, pump the brakes, what's going on? And uh, I look down there, I'm like, oh, okay. Uh, so then I get to put that in for them and right. make a little, right. a little money and teach a little lesson, okay? Uh, on the flip side of that, this is a two-parter, is going in too far. So they'll go in all the way here to make sure that detent is captured. Listen, they'll capture the detent, but look at that. You can see that buffer tube sticking through the receiver and they, they can't close their upper on it. Right. They're like, hey, what what's my, my parts don't fit. Um, yeah, that's, that's why they don't fit. Easy to do, first time out. Listen, it's, uh, it's okay to make mistakes, but you need to learn from your mistakes. Right. And um, that's literally why we're here. We didn't... Uh, more comments on the you know we didn't try to sell you anything in this video. Not trying to, I'm not trying to sell you any. Knowledge is free. This is free information. So there it is. There it is. If you have another mistake you can think of, leave it in the comments. We'd like to hear from you, and I think everybody else would too in the AR world. Yep. So next mistake we're gonna make is making another one of these videos. All right. And on that note, thank you very much for watching. We'll see you next time.